Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. A group of American business leaders met China's President Xi Jinping in Beijing in line with the Asian economy's efforts to boost foreign investments amid bilateral tensions. Blackstone founder Stephen Schwarzman, Qualcomm president and CEO Cristiano Amon, Bloomberg chair Mark Carney and uh, FedEx president Rajesh Subramanian were among the attendees. The executives were in Beijing to take part in the annual China Development Forum. Chinese President Xi Jinping told America's top business executives that China's growth prospects remain bright and its economy has not peaked yet. Now, this was a very important geopolitical meeting with China trying to turn sentiments in its favor, telling the world we are very much in business, our growth story is intact. Joining us now to take this forward is Christopher Bedder, Deputy Director of China Research at Gavikal Dragonomics and Inar Tanchin, Senior Fellow at the Tahe Institute, Founding Partner of Center for China and the World and Chairman of Asia Narratives. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Christopher, let me begin by asking you, how do you see this meeting? Uh, you had the Chinese Premier, you had President Xi Jinping meeting American businesses. Do you feel this meeting will turn the sentiments in favor, will bring business confidence back uh, in the Chinese economy? I don't think by itself it's really a game changer. I think what it is is a, it's a signal to the United States. Uh, right now, we're in a period where U.S.-China relations have actually been a little bit stable, um, but she no doubt has his eye on the future, and the future is the elections in November. And in particular, there's a good chance that Donald Trump might come back in the office. And he has explicitly threatened that he would levy very high tariffs on, on China. Um, and that's really what's on the mind of a lot of Chinese policymakers right now. It's on the mind of a lot of business. Uh, so they're concerned about uh, the environment in China, the policy environment in particular, why growth is so slow. Um, but I think from the Chinese side, they're also worried about what's going to happen with U.S.-China relations. Right. Uh, in our tangent, of course, uh, U.S. and China relations is a cause for worry. And uh, but the bright side of it, you had the World Bank president there in Beijing this week at the China Development Forum meeting. Uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is set to visit very, very soon. Would you say that U.S.-China ties are on the mend? And one call that came from the IMF chief was we need pro-market reforms in China. Do you think Xi Jinping will go that extra mile on reforms that some of the global businesses and the likes of IMF and World Bank are asking? I think yeah. when it comes to reform, I'm sorry. wants to bring in outside investment, foreign direct investment. In terms of how Beijing looks at it, I think a lot of people are misled. Uh, yes, uh, relations between China and the U.S. are a little bit on the mend, but at the same time, you have uh, instances where the U.S. Congress and Biden are passing laws and trying to uh, sanction uh, individuals and companies. Uh, you see this with TikTok. You've seen it in the past uh, with Huawei, etc. So at this point, Beijing has pretty much given up on Washington. Uh, they want to have cordial relations. The door is always open. But they're going directly to business and also to the people. They want, uh, in terms of businesses, they see this as a kind of medium-term um, strategy where they talk about their markets, their growth, uh, which was one-third of the total world's growth last year and will continue to be the major growth driver in the world. And then people-to-people -people exchanges to kind of do um, ameliorate this uh, negative press that China seems to get on a daily basis. Right. Uh, Christopher, coming back to you, we saw Tim Cook saying that he loves being in China. It's a very vibrant uh, economy. They also opened up a, a new store uh, and they announced an investment uh, in China as well. Do you think companies like Apple, U.S. businesses, which were diversifying, are very keen on getting back lost market share making sure that they continue benefiting from the Chinese economy and connections, supply chain connections with China? I think they are to an extent. I think that what we saw was that during the COVID period, uh, China obviously went into lockdown for um, essentially more than a year in 2022. 
Um, I think that that was a very low ebb for a lot of American businesses when it came to China. And I think that China has been positioning itself as now reopening, uh, I mean, since last year, but really the economy really underwhelmed last year. So what we're seeing this year is that China is really doubling down on the narrative that it's reopening. And I think that there's also an element by which um, foreign businesses sort of need to both show Beijing that they're responding to that, um, but also they are to an extent interested in the market. The market is coming back for them at least to, to a certain degree uh, relative to the past few years. Right. Uh, in our tangent, uh, the Chinese government has predicted a 5% growth rate for this year. But at the same time, there are concerns around domestic demand. What do you think uh, are the steps that the Chinese government could take to boost that uh, consumer demand on the ground? Because this is what many companies around the world would be looking at. Yeah, absolutely. It, it has to be jobs. Uh, and also disposable income. Uh, last year, uh, disposable income in China grew by 6.2%. Uh, in uh, the United States, it only grew by 4.2%. Uh, unfortunately, though, it was uh, disproportionate um, in terms of the haves got more and the have-nots did not. I mean, literally, uh, the richest doubled their wealth while the poor uh, and the mid lower middle classes uh, were really suffering just to pay their, their increased rents and uh, you know, defeat uh, <clears throat> groceries and things like that. In China, they're looking slightly differently. They want to put more money in the pocket of pockets of people uh, lower down the scale, uh, poor, uh, middle, lower middle class, and middle class people who they think will be the key to driving confidence and also consumerism. Right. Important point there in our tangent. Let me go back to uh, Christopher. Now, Christopher, if we look at uh, the optics of this meeting, Chinese President Xi Jinping had also met uh, American businesses a day after the San Francisco summit with President Biden. But here at the China Development Forum, which took place before the meeting with Xi Jinping, you had the Chinese Premier addressing American businesses. Usually, it has been at the level of Vice Premier. The optics of the meeting, do you think the optics of the meeting were encouraging that here you have the Chinese leadership going that extra mile to reach out to businesses? Oh, absolutely. I think that the message was just she showing up to, to this meeting, which he doesn't, he doesn't usually do. Uh, usually it's uh, the premier, in this case, Li Chang, would engage with, with foreign enterprises. So just the fact that Xi Jinping is meeting with them clearly sends a message to the American side that he wants stability in the relationship. And he said as much in his comments to the CEOs. Um, I also think it was intended for, for American businesses. So there was an element of this that was directed at the U.S. government. Um, but clearly he wants to message to American businesses that the Chinese government is uh, fundamentally open to business, which is really just not something that the U.S. government, uh, U.S. businesses in particular, should really that they've thought uh, for quite a while. U.S. business sentiment has turned pretty sharply against China in the past couple of years. I think that Xi Jinping is making uh, a pretty big effort here to try to reverse that. Right. Uh, in our tangent, do you think this is a clear, clear case of rapprochement with China reaching out to U.S.? Uh, we know that the November election in the U.S. is just around the corner. Uh, it could very well be Donald Trump coming back to power as president of America and U.S.-China ties could be volatile once again. What is the message that Xi Jinping is sending out to the U.S. government at this stage? And do you think there was a message for the Republicans there as well? Um, no, I, I, unfortunately, uh, people think that some, for some reason that uh, the Beijing would favor uh, Donald Trump over Biden. Actually, both bring equal amounts of chaos from the Chinese perspective. Uh, what Beijing is doing, as I said before, is they're concentrating on a medium term, which is the economic side, the, um, you know, all the businesses that they were addressing. I disagree with my colleague uh, when he says that uh, you know, this this is uh, somehow American businesses have lost confidence uh, in uh, China. What it has been is that the U.S. government has been pushing policies which make it very difficult to see the future. Uncertainty is the death of business. So at this point, 
they're trying, uh, Beijing is trying to reassure uh, American businesses and also businesses around the world that China is open and that it is uh, willing and um, has the markets to make sure that they have a future as far as the long term goes. That's all about people to people diplomacy. Right. Uh, so we'll see how things go. But uh, of course, it was a hectic diplomatic week in China, something that the world would be watching very closely in our tangent. And Christopher, thank you very much for joining us here on Global Eye, giving us uh, your perspective on those crucial business meetings in Beijing. On that note, we take a short break here on Global Eye. But coming up, at least 143 people have been killed at a concert hall in Moscow after it was attacked by multiple gunmen who shot civilians at point blank. A discussion with the former Indian ambassador to Russia, Kaval Sibyl.